loves. Okay, so here is a new video. And my apologies. I know. This is one day late. And I have no excuse for why it's late. I just want you to know I'm very sorry. And hopefully there's more to come today. And in the next two days. Because I'm actually off from school. And school being the shit that it is. It is holding me back. But I'm here to record for you. And I'm sorry if this intro sounds really fucking weird, but I I don't I don't really know what to say. There's not really any big announcement, I guess, but besides it's just in my community post. <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Um I hope you enjoy the video and I'll see you in the outro. Next before the video, this is a request and this is where <clears throat> listener or you get your period if you're a girl. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry this is one where listener gets your period and Carl being the uneducated teenage boy due to the apocalypse that he is, <laughs> um, he doesn't know what it is and he tries to comfort you into your room, seeing you, lying on your bed, crawl into a ball holding your stomach. This being very unusual behavior for you, Carl walks to your bed and sits down next to you, although you don't seem to really notice him due to the unknown pain in your lower abdomen that Carl didn't understand, but he caresses the side of your face as your eyes dart open and look at him. Baby, are you okay? This isn't doesn't like you. You're usually up by now. You okay? You- what? You tell him that you're on your period and it's causing you more hell than usual. But Carl gives you a face of confusion. He doesn't seem to know what you're talking about. A what? A- a, a period? Um. I don't mean to sound like an absolute idiot, but what is a period, baby? You try to laugh, but the pain in your stomach only causes you more pain as a laugh tries to force out of you. But you look up at him, you hold his hand, which is still on the side of your face. You tell him that a period is something that usually happens every month for a week to women and where they usually bleed out of their area and before you can finish explaining, Carl's face seems to be somewhat pale but the blood rushing to his face, making his cheeks extremely red, as if he didn't know certain words. Uh, uh, okay, yeah, 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 I, 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 uh, uh, <clears throat> I, th I think I, I think I understand it now. Um, is, is there, um, is there anything I can get you, like, um, pa painkillers, or, um, water, some something. You look up at him, still remaining the same eye contact. You find his stuttering somewhat adorable and dumb at the same time, but you ask him for painkillers and water as you hadn't known that there were any from anywheres, but there were some. You, Carl nods at your request, understanding that you need painkillers, and he goes downstairs. I'll be right back, okay? You, you just stay, just stay here. Oh, well, I know from the state of pain you're in, you can't 
well you won't really move but just to be you know safe um I'll, I'll, I'll be right back carl exits the room and he shortly returns back with the painkillers and a glass of water in his other hand here here baby here here he hands you the painkillers and the water you sit up and you take them you feeling any better you look at him but not eye contact this time you tell him you just want to sleep for now and to not let you weigh him down from daily activity that he would usually do carl nods i'll come i'll come check on you in a little bit okay baby i won't be alone i promise i love you i'm just gonna go out and help my <clears throat> dad with some stuff so you just you get some sleep okay i love you Carl kisses your cheek, and then your lips, walks out of the room. But you didn't know that he was, you didn't know that he was not going to go help Rick. In fact, Rick didn't need help today. There wasn't a lot going on. Apart from trying to make the walls stronger, there wasn't much left, but other people were handling that. Carl decides to go to Maggie, one of the few females he knew he could trust there, at least with health advice on you, as you and Maggie were seemingly close, and he's known Maggie for a long time since the Atlanta group and the farm, but Carl asks Maggie what she thinks you need, because well, she's a girl and he doesn't fully grasp the concept of periods, but he understands from the state of pain you were in that they were painful. Maggie explains to Carl in a shortly manner of time, but also gathers up some supplies that she knows you would probably need, or want for that matter. Maggie tells Carl that he should really be with you, that she knows what it's like, and she knows that she always would need some form of comfort, and that a lot of people prefer it, so she figured that you aren't any different. Carl nods, takes the supplies from Maggie, and goes back to you. Th thank you, Maggie. Thank you. Maggie nods, and seems to go back to whatever she was doing previously. Baby, you hear a knock on your door and Carl's soft voice following along. You tell him to come in and he comes in, sitting on your bed next to you. Seeing the supplies he holds, you ask him what it is. Oh, um, just some stuff Maggie gave me for you. I didn't actually have to go help my dad. I just, I want to go find Maggie because I, I want to take, I want to take care of you. You smile and nod understandingly. <laughs> yeah, um, she, it's a heating pad, um, pads and tampons. She didn't know which one you prefer and honestly I, I, I don't know either. Um, but they're, they're, they're both there if you need them, um, and chocolate, she says that it can help, or it's a common craving, I guess? Yeah. <laughs> you nod and agree with him that it was a pretty common craving, but Carl hands you the pads and tampons. Here. Do you need these, baby? You nod, telling him he's practically a lifesaver, along with Maggie, for holding the supplies that you need that you needed. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, here, here. Go you can go to go to the bathroom and get changed and I'll I'll be right here. I'll wait for you. I mean, I don't <laughs> I don't really have anywhere else to be in, plus I'm 
I'm already taking care of you and I'm not gonna stop. I wanna be here for you, baby. I'll go get changed. And while you're at it, um here. He hands you a pair of his sweatpants. Um, you kinda have a stain on the back of yours and I can only imagine that's not comfortable. If your face turns red and you nod, tell him thanking him for his understanding. Yeah. I'll I'll change your sheets really quickly. Um they're in your closet, right? You nod and walk out of the room, coming back minutes later, and seeing Carl sitting on your bed with the fresh sheets already on. You smile as he gets up, wrapping his arms around you, hugging you. I love you, baby. You feeling any better from earlier? Yeah, a little bit. That's good. That's good. Okay, come on. Let's get you- let's lie you down. I don't want you on your feet when this is happening. I mean, I know you're- you can be active with it. <clears throat> Maggie explained some stuff to me, but I just- I'm taking care of you, and I'm telling you that you need to lay down, and I will be with you. You laugh, calling him a dork. <laughs> I am not a dork. Okay, maybe I am, but who cares? I'm your dork, and you're my baby. Now get your ass on that bed. Cause you seem to be grasping your stomach again, and I do not want you on the floor, because that would be more painful than the stomach cramps themselves. Um, <laughs> just get on, get on the bed, baby. You laugh. Carl understands how he sounded and sounded a little dominant and demanding. There's no way in hell you found that hot. You nod. Well, I mean, I guess maybe that's something we should test later. <laughs> All right, cover. Carl pulls you into his embrace. Now sitting on the bed, you two cuddle. The pain in your stomach seems to just sit there and not beat at you like a drum, but just remain tame for a little bit. Carl's hand slowly runs to your stomach, just rubbing gentle little circles, just rubbing gentle little circles and tracing simple little patterns onto your skin. The warmth of his embrace and the stomach pain no longer eating you alive, you you lay your head on his chest and you fall asleep. Carl notices, but he doesn't do anything. He just still traces little patterns into your skin, realizing it's probably the thing that's helping aid you to sleep. <laughs>